Good Monday evening to you and welcome again into our home. Thanks for joining us on this August 31st. I cannot believe it's the end of August already. September is here. It's amazing how fast this year is going and maybe 2020 will just get done and we'll all be happy. So let's begin our devotion tonight in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. John 20. How important it is for God to keep us focused on things that are unseen. For we are so easily snared by the things we can see. If Peter was ever going to walk on water, he had to walk. But if he was going to swim to Jesus, he had to swim. He could not do both. If a bird is going to fly, it must stay away from fences and trees, trusting the buoyancy of its wings. And if it, try <clears throat> and if it tries to stay within easy reach of the ground, it will never fly very well. God had to bring Abraham to the end of his own strength and let him, let him see that with his own body he could do nothing. He had to consider his own body as good as dead, Hebrews 11, and, when trust, and then trust God to do all the work. When he looked away from himself and trusted only God, he became fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised, Romans 4. This is what God is teaching us, and he has to keep results that are encouraging away from us until we learn to trust him without them. Then he loves to make his word as real to us as in actuality as it is our, in our faith. I do not ask that he must prove his word is true to me, and that before I can believe, he must first let me see. It is enough for me to know it is true because he says it so. An unchanging word I'll stand and trust it's all I can do. You know, I really like that. And for me, as I prepared for this devotion for tonight, there was one word that kept coming back to me over and over and over again, and that was surrender. You know, we don't like the word surrender in our culture and society because we see it as giving up. We think of it as a military word, waving the white flag, saying, I'm a loser, you win, I'll give up. And I guess that's understandably so, but if you look back at the etymology of the word and you go back to uh, the Latin, the word for surrender means to join the winning side. <laughs> to join the winning side. I, I kind of like that, to join the winning side. You know, the life that God calls us to live is truly a life of surrender. He wants us to do nothing more than to completely give up ourselves. To give up ourselves and trust in Him without seeing, without being able to explain it logically or through math or through science or whatever. Because God is a mystery. And if you listen to my sermon from yesterday, there is more on that in there, the importance of mystery in our lives. But God wants us to surrender. I suppose I don't surrender when I latch on to something and worry about it over and over and over until it makes me sick. I suppose I'm not surrendering when I allow my anxiety to get the best of me and not use the wonderful tools that my counselors have put into place, the wonderful tool of prayer, and those other things that I know I have been given to reduce that anxiety. I guess I suppose um, I don't really uh, um, surrender when you know hard things come into my life, hard decisions come into my life, difficult people come into my life, and what I try to do is manage it, manage it, manage it, and keep control instead of going to God first and saying, okay, God, I surrender to you. You show me the right way. You make it happen. You know, right now is a great example for me as a pastor. There is just so much weird stuff going on right now. Church is just strange. Not you are strange, but church is strange. And it's hard. I guess a lot of people have stress right now, and, and I do too. It's hard. It's hard not knowing is church going to survive? Is church as we know it going to make it through this pandemic? I mean, I just read a study today that says one in five churches, if not more, will close within the next 18 months in our country. It's hard to know how our members are doing when we, we aren't seeing them on a weekly basis now. It's hard to know, am I getting through to people over these means of, of internet and, and social media? It's hard to know, um, uh, you know, it's hard to deal with things that are going on when, when we feel so disconnected with people and we expect people to do things and to serve and to stand up and that's not happening. And the list goes on and on and on, right? And it's just hard. It gets, it gets overwhelming. And it's that way for all of us. And in the midst of that overwhelmingness, if that's a word, I think I just need to learn to surrender. To sit back to take a few deep breaths, to close my eyes, to hear the words of Psalm 46, be still, be still. In the midst of chaos, it's hard to be still, right? It's kind of like a, a ship, in, you know, telling a ship in the midst of a big storm with high waves, hey, stop, be still, don't rock, right? It's hard to be still. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Doesn't it seem so simple? 
all God wants from us is surrender. It seems so simple. He just wants us to give up and to say, take me into your loving hands, into your hands of grace and mercy, into your hands of healing and strength, into your hands of peace and overwhelming forgiveness and unconditional love and grace. Take me into those mighty hands and hold me. It's like a parent picking up that scared child and holding it close to the breast, patting the back, smiling, whispering into the ear, I love you. That's what God does for us. Surrender. It's a beautiful word when you really think about it. One that I want to make part of my daily life more and more. Because when I don't surrender and I take over, oh, I tend to make a mess of things because I'm a sinful human being. I'm a sinful human being and I make a mess of things. Hi, my name is Travis and I'm a sinner. But oh, how beautiful it is when we just surrender at the foot of the cross, not knowing what the next moment will bring, not knowing what's going to happen, not knowing what the outcome of even tomorrow will be, but knowing only one thing. Jesus holds us in the palm of his hand and never lets us go. Amen. So we're going to continue with our hymns for our prayers for tonight, uh, for the evening. And our hymn tonight is Before the Ending of the Day. Before the ending of the day, creator of the world, we pray. Thy grace and peace to us allow and be our guard and keeper now. From all the terrors of the night, from evil dreams defend our sight. Drive far away our wicked foe, that stain of sin we may not know. O Father, this we ask be done through Jesus Christ, thine only Son, who with the Holy Ghost and thee both lives and reigns eternally. Amen. Thanks again for joining us tonight. I love you guys very much. I miss you tremendously, and I cherish you. You have a great night. God bless you. Bye-bye.